JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for July the 14th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It gained the most versus uh, the pound, the Kiwi, NOC and the Aussie in that order, while it decked out the least gains against the SEC, the Swiss franc and the yen. The greenback lost some ground only versus the euro. Now the Kiwi and the Aussie were among the main losers, while the safe havens franc and the yen were among the currencies that lost the least ground uh, against uh, the US dollar, which suggests that risk appetite to get hit at some point during the day. Indeed, although major EU indices traded in the green, in the US, the S&P 500 and Nasdaq fell 0.94 and 2.13% respectively. The Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, finished uh, virtually unchanged. The negative investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today with Japan's Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai Composites sliding 0.94 and 1.81% respectively. EU shares rose uh, as uh, two experimental coronavirus uh, vaccines by Pfizer and BioNTech uh, received, the, received the US Food and Drug Administration's uh, fast track designation. That said, the party was uh, short lived with market sentiment taking a dive during the US and Asian sessions, perhaps due to California scaling back its reopening, as well as due to fresh tensions between the US and China. On Monday, the US rejected China's claims to offshore, to offshore resources in uh, most of the South China Sea, while the Trump administration announced that uh, it is planning to scrap a 2013 auditing agreement between the US and China that could uh, foreshadow a broader crackdown on Chinese companies listed in the US. On Friday, we noted that with several US states halting or reversing their reopenings and with daily coronavirus infections uh, keep hitting record highs, we will turn uh, neutral with regards to the broader market sentiment. We will stick to that, to that view for now. Despite yesterday's decent slide, it is too early to argue for a bearish reversal, while on the other hand, with some nations reintroducing lockdown measures and the US-China uh, tensions flaring up again, the bulls may have lost their strength. Thus, we prefer to wait for clearer signs with regards to the market's uh, forthcoming direction. Now, tonight, during the Asian Morning Wednesday, we have a central bank announcing its monetary policy decision, and this is the Bank of Japan. The last time they met, Japanese officials maintained short-term interest rates at minus 0.1% and the target of the 10-year government bond yields at around 0% as was widely expected, noting that the economy will likely improve as the fallout from the, from the pandemic subsides. That said, they noted that they are likely to increase the size of uh, money pumped out via market operations and lending facilities to combat the virus from uh, the current 75 trillion yen to 110 uh, trillion. Policymakers are not expected to proceed with any changes to their main policy tools this time either, but it would be interesting to see whether they will expand further some of their emergency lending programs. In any case, we doubt that the yen will react massively to this decision. We expect the safe haven currency to stay mostly linked to headlines and developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, and especially anything surrounding the coronavirus. Now, as for today's events, during the early European morning, we already got the UK GDP as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates, all for May. GDP rebounded 1.8% month over month after tumbling 
20.4% uh, in April, while both industrial production and manufacturing production improved by more than anticipated. That said, the pound barely reacted to this set of data, perhaps as uh, GBP traders keep their gaze locked on uh, Brexit with the next, with the next uh, round of negotiations scheduled to take place in Brussels this week. From Sweden, we have the inflation numbers for June. Both the headline CPI and CPIF rates are expected to have risen to 0.5% year over year from 0%, but as it is always the case, we prefer to pay more attention to the core CPIF metric, which excludes the volatile items of energy. That rate rose to 1.2% year over year in May from 1% in April. At its uh, latest gathering, the Riksbank Bank decided to extend its framework for its asset purchases from, th from 300 billion uh, SEC to 500 uh, billion up to the end of June 2021 while it announced that in September it will start purchasing corporate bonds. The board also decided to cut interest rates and extend maturities on lending to banks, despite keeping the repo rate unchanged at 0%. With all this in mind, we don't expect a potential acceleration in the nation's inflation to alter the bank's plans for providing support to the economic recovery. Germany's ZDW survey for July and Eurozone's industrial production for May are also coming out. With regards to the ZDW survey, the current conditions index is expected to have risen to minus 65 from minus 83.1, while the economic sentiment index is anticipated to have slid to 60 from 63.4. Eurozone's industrial production is forecast to have rebounded 14.5% month over month after tumbling 17.1%. Later in the day, we have the US CPIs for June. The headline rate is expected to have risen to 0.6% year over year from 0.1%, but the core one is anticipated to have ticked down to 1.1% year over year from 1.2%. The American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is also coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is currently available. As for the speakers, we have two on today's agenda, Fed Board Governor Lyle Brainard and St. Louis Fed President James Bullard. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.